Shut up and sit down. Yes. <laughs> like, okay, yes, fucking. I, this is going to sound defeatist, and I don't like 100% mean for it to sound that way, but it just feels like so many people are like pushing rocks uphill, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the people that already control a lot of stuff are like, oh, that's nice. There's a bunch of people trying to push rocks towards me, but eventually the rocks pull roll back over those people, you know? Like, I just saw this shit, man. I went to the Y this morning, and I just saw, I was reading this article that, like, you know the Amazon, the cashier-less stuff that they're doing? And, like, yeah, yeah. You know, they have that one store, and I think they're putting one in L.A. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, now he's, now they're taking the technology, um, and they're selling it, to other retailers, right? So eventually maybe you'll go into like a Best Buy and like, man, I've never gone into a Best Buy and people have been helpful. So maybe that's a good thing. But like now you'll go into like a Bed Bath & Beyond and it's like, oh, okay, now there's no cashier. So I just buy these pillows and these frying pans and I walk out, right? um, It's like, okay, but when you think about it, it's like all that's doing is it's like, okay, maybe it's more convenient. You don't get hassled in a store and I get that, but it's like in reality, all that shit is doing is it's making Bezos more rich and it's (laughs) making more of us at the execution grind level have less things that we can earn money doing. Right. So it's kind of like, again, pushing boulders up hills, you know? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, I think on that though, and you know this, this, like, this isn't, this isn't a zero sum game. Like, I think too many people get caught up in, and you and I both do it too. I've heard us Twitter back or text back and forth yeah. while they're at it yeah. <laughs> with the, with the. Where am I going to get my innovation and how come I can't get my shit noticed? Right, right. <laughs> and it's like, but, and we get mad, but we get mad at the wrong people, right? And I do it all the time. Like, I'm pissed mm-hmm. off that Jeff Bezos gets all this crap, but his making millions doesn't preclude my ability to make millions. No, it doesn't. And it's it's not, like, I agree. It's or not anybody me. else's. Right. It's like, I, I even, man, I was, um, and we can probably turn this into, like, one longer episode and just do another uh, two, which is cool. But, like, I was even last night, um, like, Owens had a migraine, and she went to bed, and I was watching some bullshit show on CBS, and it was, like, half interesting, and I was, like, flicking through my phone, and I was, like, looking at some people on Twitter that have, like, big followings, which, again, doesn't mean jack shit in reality. And they're, like, getting bylines in, like, the Atlantic or whatever for, like, short digital articles. And, like, even in that moment, I was like, man, why haven't I been noticed by more people, right? Like, why am I not doing this? And it was like, I had, like, a fucking three-minute spiral. And then I was kind of like, oh, man, like, I can't even care about this. It's like, just do your best and try to put yourself out there and, like, Sometimes cool opportunities come in and sometimes it's kind of like step by step. And this, I don't know. It's like, it's not, I don't think this makes you less of a go getter person or whatever. It's just like, it's some, some stuff is like almost beyond your control. You just got to try to do the best you can. Right. And I'm going to turn a light on real quick. Keep going. Cool. And you just can't, I don't know. You just can't, um both of us are guilty of it millions billions of people are guilty of it but you just can't like worry i don't know you just can't like worry that much about some of this shit because like you said some guy with a yacht in australia doesn't preclude you from making money or doing something interesting or whatever right so 
it's not a zero sum game. I would say if anything too, figuring out ways to hang out with people who have the lifestyle that you want right. is going to push you into the lifestyle that you want. I mean, right. that's kind of the bottom line of the whole thing. Right. Like, like when we talk about manifesting your shit, it doesn't mean sit around wishing and, and just like letting, you know, man, I wish I had, you know, $15,000 of income this week. Well, okay. Well then go hang out with the people that do that. Right, for because sure. Because it's gonna, guy, it's gonna by proxy in most instances, you're going to learn just from being around right. them how to do that. Because people, right. people that do that, love to talk about their methods. Hundred percent. And, and they, they don't people that they don't they're not stingy with their knowledge. They like to spread that around. You get all these people that are like, oh, buy my class to teach you how to make, you know what I mean? And that's not a bad thing. Cause I have, I mean, I do that. Like that's my coaching model, right? Like, right. but I give a lot away for free too. My step is more like when you come to me as a, as a, as a client, you're coming to me for one-on-one -on -one interaction, right? I give right. away, I don't have a problem giving away my stuff for free, right? right. If you want something more intense and more, um, focused on you and your actual situation, then that's what you hire me for. But we don't, we get these people that are like, oh, pay, you know, $70,000 for my, for my weekend yeah. retreat. And, yeah. and they're, it's not the same thing. And I'm not saying that those things don't work because they absolutely work because when you pay a high right. price and I'm expensive, so I'm saying this from that place, when you pay for something like that, you show up. Yeah. I agree. And, and the person that's teaching you how shows up. Right. But if you find I a way to make friends too. with people like Richard Branson and Elon Musk, they love to give you that information. They're happy to share their knowledge and it'll rub off on you. Right. And it, you're right. It increases the accountability to like just show up, you know. Um, yeah. I, it took me, you know, it took me a long time to figure that out is that if I wanted better clients that really wanted to participate and that it went for my web services too, I had to charge higher prices because those people are the people that are going to show up because they just spent a few grand on what I'm doing, you know, like yeah. that's a significant amount of investment for most people. And so they're going to show up. For sure. Like I was, when I was leaving the Y today, I saw they had a, they had like an eight week, I want to say eight week. It was like an eight week, like path to wellness thing. Mm -hmm. And it was like over $2,000 for eight weeks, which is like north of two, it was probably two, 250 a week, right? And I'm thinking to myself, like, man, people that go to a Y in general instead of like some boutique fitness thing, that's like a big outlay of money. So I'm hoping that it's like, um, you know, there's like nutrition stuff and whatever. Oh, yeah, for sure. But it's like, to your point, it's like the fact that the price tag is higher, if someone's willing to drop that, they're going to probably be more accountable to the process because that's like a chunk of money coming out of their life across two months, right? So. Well, I mean, and it works the opposite way. On, I know on my end, when I got my first high paying client, I, I showed up because that was the most money I'd gotten in one thing anymore. And I had to provide yeah. that amount of value. Right. So it doesn't always happen that way. Like I've had coaches that don't show up right. no matter how much I paid them, but I have right. a really good business coach now. And we've been going over that. Nope. Keep your prices where they're at. You know, right. they're not bad and people will show up for your, for your stuff. So. Okay, so what do you think? Um, what do you think makes a good business coach? Because I know there's probably some degree of skepticism in the broader <laughs> world about the concepts, you know, like whether it's snake oil or some bullshit. So like, I first of all wouldn't take think? advice from somebody who hasn't been there. Right, I agree with that. Right, like for instance, like like you've walked through the fire and you've been through the struggle. And so you could get away with coaching a lot of people through a lot of things, especially entrepreneurial and social media wise. Yeah, probably. Um, so there's a lot of that. I would, actually, I would need a degree of self-confidence probably to do that. Which No, because what we found out is, and this is, this is a trip and it works really, and it might work similarly for you, but I was talking to my business coach about that. Cause I'm like, well, I'm not really walking the talk and blah, blah, blah. And she's like, yeah, but you know, when you walk the talk is when you have to show up for it. Right. And right. so that, I mean, so then, so then I get a client that drops a few grand on my six week program. And now I have to walk that talk because I have to be that person. Right. right. Well, and, and that makes me a better person as well. So. 
I mean, they're basically like showing up for you fiscally, so you gotta like absolutely you gotta double down on it. You know, I yep. mean, I don't, I don't disagree with that at all. I would say a good business coach is the same as any other kind of coach. Like I'm not a business coach. I'm an empowerment coach. I do do some business stuff, but my focus is on personal empowerment and that and motivation. But I would say yeah. it, for the same way, you need to click with them, but you don't really want to connect with somebody that hasn't been through the fire. Right. You don't want these people that are, um, the, the people that are dangerous are the people that like, Go take a course and then regurgitate it. Right. Because they right. don't know all the little nuanced, how do I handle specific situations, right? And then they have to, on the fly, come up with something that's not going to work, and you're already held, held in by an amount of dollars that... Right. I would say, too, like, I know we kind of talked about this a little bit, um, uh, um, about, like, giving stuff away for free versus like paid stuff or whatever, but I always like, one thing I always distrust is when people um, kind of like everything they share or post or whatever is tied to, um, is tied to like their offerings, right? Like they can never talk about something just for the sake of having an interesting discussion or presenting like interesting concepts or whatever. It's gotta be like, Hey, here's a piece of news that happened in the broader world. PS, like this is why you should buy my course based on coronavirus <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. That shit is always like, I always, um, I always just fucking like, I can't deal with that. You, know? you can tell those people haven't taken just a common decency course because they haven't taken an internet etiquette course or a business course because even any any like even brick and mortar business courses are going to teach you like don't be that person like i've been a mary Kay consultant for 15 years and most people don't know that about me because not everything is tied into hey buy this skincare buy this makeup um and i i know people that are like that that that's right. what they do every time they post something it's a complete sales pitch I have to come from a place of authenticity. And if it doesn't feel right to be pitching it, I just feel like the content I'm putting out draws, pe draws my people to me and they're there for a reason. And then they'll, you know, I push them sometimes, I'll nudge them a little bit, but for the most part, it's up to them. Like you can't, you, like if you wanted to go to a business coach, you're not gonna go until you're ready. Right, for sure. Anyway, like, so, like it doesn't matter even if you had the three grand to drop, you're not going to drop that three grand until you find somebody that you like and that you're, and you're ready to, to show up. I mean, that's the end of that. Do you so. think that, um, do you think like that Facebook works for that type of shit? Cause I know like the Facebook ads ecosystem is cool and it does help grow businesses and offerings. And I've seen that with like different, industries and even coaching and like entrepreneurial shit but do you think that it's actually good for like attracting people or do you think that people kind of like distrust stuff they come across on facebook because it's not like quote unquote like the perfect i'm not saying advertise on linkedin either because i don't think that resonates but I don't know. I just feel like there's a certain group of people like entrepreneurial quote unquote hustle people who like deeply believe in uh, Facebook and its power. And then there's a lot of people that I feel like are suspect of Facebook or don't go on there as much because like they're crazy fucking grandmas on there ranting about politics. So I just wonder from a, like a business coaching prep type context does that do you think it's like a valuable platform or what um okay so yeah that's but that's how i that's mostly how i contact my coach but i knew her from years ago when yeah. i used to write for her magazine so she sold her magazine off to print and became a business coach which she had had at that point like five different things that she had done that with um, and so I know her through, um, most of our points of contact have been, um, on Facebook or Instagram. Okay. I think it, 
I mean, if Twitter's your thing, then you find the guy on Twitter. Right. You know what I mean? Kind of like navigate to your thing. Yeah, because because the reality is with the with the authenticity that you're going to provide, it's going to have to fall along those lines. If your dude's on Twitter and Twitter's where you want to be, then you're going to be on Twitter. And so your followers and your clients are going to find you on Twitter. I mean, that's just, right. it kind of follows. I don't like Facebook. And honestly, I'm pulling most of my pages or I have very little yeah. interaction there just because it, it seems useless to me. They keep making right, it harder so and talk, harder. Like, talk to me about this shit, man, because this is like one thing I texted you when we were going to do this taping anyway. I just feel like we're at this weird spot with Facebook and maybe we've been there for like three to four years and I'm just not fully aware of it. But like, I just feel like we're at this spot where every fucking thing is now put through a political prism and it doesn't have to be, right? Like, I think of even some people that have come in and out of, like, just be social shit on Twitter over the years is, like, their Facebooks are like that, too, where it's, like, you could literally post, like, a picture of a bird and somebody would be, like, are you saying that Biden isn't qualified? To be present. Know, right? It's like, no, man, it's just a bird. There's not like any deeper meaning to this, right? <laughs> like, I, for, I told, dude, I had one the other week, I want to say middle or last week, where I posted something that I saw. I saw it on Twitter by some like uh, person within my like, recruiting technology saying that 29% of U.S. households are now like a female is the primary breadwinner. And in the early 80s, that was like 8%. So yeah, 29 is not a majority yet, but there's clearly growth there, right? Yeah. Posted something about that. And like somebody I'm Facebook friends with that I've never met in my life in person was like, are you are you saying that like motherhood's not important? And I'm like, no, I'm not fucking saying that at all. I'm just posting a quote that uh, like a stat that's actually about female empowerment in a way. And like the first thing people do is like attack you, or there's like a political context to it. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, man! Not everything is through that prism. Now. I will say, and like you and I have discussed this in the open, so I don't think there's any mystery. I will say, like, I do some shit on there just to agitate people or just to see what the thread will become, right? That's definitely part of my nuance there. But I will say, like, I have a bunch of, like, random half people I have met, half people I haven't met, like, this weird, like, neoliberal community that jumps on everything and then i have like oddly mostly people i've never met in real life i have a bunch of like misogyny in there too right so (laughs) yeah those threads can get interesting but it's like i don't know some of it is like i use facebook almost as like a petri dish for like uh human behavior and reactions to stuff and i don't take it that seriously right i don't I, when I was like 29, 30, 31, I feel like I took shit that happened on Facebook way too fucking seriously. Like I could get depressed about someone's comment or reaction to something. Right. I don't take it seriously at all now, but I I almost use it just to like observe human behavior and go off the rails, right? But that's why I'm asking, like, I don't think, I know people have been successful with it in a business offering context. I just, the way I look at it now, I just like, I couldn't see. I agree with you that you got to meet people where they're at, but I just don't have enough of a healthy respect for Facebook as a platform to see it as much of a business thing right now. I don't, maybe I'm dumb. No, I don't think, I think that's, I think that's valid. Well, I mean, you're not dumb anyway, but I think that's valid because I, I like, I don't even know if you saw, but I posted something regarding how different things would be. It literally said, uh, how different would things be if Bernie actually liked women and backed Liz instead of jumping in and running against her? Uh, Yeah, I saw that. That crossed my algorithm. Yeah. And I just was like, and I seriously, it was rhetorical because we don't know the answer to that. Like, right. whatever. And I got attacked 
like yeah. you know I do whenever I post anything like that. Someone that I haven't ever met in my life came out of my Facebook woodwork and just vomited all right, over me. Nuts, yeah, it's <laughs> fucking insane, dude. Uh, and here's the thing now, Ted. Here's the thing now. Like before, when we were filming, and it's been a couple of years since we've really filmed anything. So a lot of shit's happened in like a couple of years. Right. Um, so here's the thing now. Now I'm at a place where I'm fighting stage three breast cancer. So if you come at me, fucking, right. you better hold on tight because right. you're not scaring yeah. me out. Yeah, for sure, man. <laughs> I you know, like, like yeah. okay, we're going to have a problem. <laughs> yeah, no, I hear that, man. And that, that's like completely within your right, too, you know, is like, I would, uh, in like higher uh in like higher stress deeper life context i feel like uh lashing out is appropriate and that's what's fucked up to me about social in general is that you social almost became faceless to people it's like anonymized so you don't know what a person is going through or dealing with at the time that you might be in some heated thread with them so you're thinking like oh man Tara fucking went off the handle on this one and it's like no not really because you don't know the context of her life beyond this fucking thread right, right. so um, I was telling somebody the story today that I had to do an interview for um, is like man I had a job six seven years ago and within the span of like four weeks this guy he ended his marriage of 17 years and then his like mom died and I'm talking like three weeks right like tight window and he was like I don't know maybe high middle in a hierarchy if you want to define it mm -hmm. and he was like snapping at people like fucking left and right right and everybody was like what's up with this dude man why is he being such a prick and it's like okay well like people are not just their jobs people are not just like whatever they deliver at their jobs whatever they roi is right they have fucking lives and they go through stuff and like we like to suppress emotion in a work context but like emotion is a very big deal about yeah you can't we're gonna have to do a right. show on that. you can't do that <laughs> right you can't do it right so it's just like it's funny because people were like what's up with like bob or whatever like being such a prick to everybody it's like no man it's like a lot more that there's a lot more that impacts and inputs your work and like whether even like being on facebook threads it's like you don't know where a person's at we've kind of like anonymized all this stuff and i think people feel like they can attack or offer criticism or judgment that they never would do normally well, right. there's so much, so many things that, especially like on on Twitter with the with the social road trip crew, things that that McCormick and all those people have said to me that I'm just right. standing there looking at it at the screen, going, "If you were in my face right now, like you've been before, you wouldn't right. even say that shit to me." I have a, I have a kid that I used to like work out with that lives in Texas, and he like he'll text me sometimes about like Facebook threads and shit that I've done. And he's always like, man, there's like 70 to 85% of the people that just like will rake you on Facebook about something. If they were in like a hotel lobby with you, they would never fucking say that, right? Because, but it's like we anonymize this whole thing. So people are like, man, I can hide behind my laptop, my phone screen, whatever. And there's like no real consequence except maybe we're going to say some heated shit to each other, right? So I think that's probably a drawback in terms of like broader communication and like decorum and civility across the society of people that are more like tech uh, friendly or like mobile driven. Right. Uh, that's probably an overplayed narrative that like social and like mobile are dooming us. Like I think a lot of people say that. I'm not 100% sure that it's true, but I do think people kind of like launch into these like stupid attacks without knowing the full context of things for sure right and i i'm totally i know that i'm totally guilty of that at times because it's I do it too, man. No taken from my perception and what i'm going through at that moment right and like right. i said i'm fighting cancer right now so come at me 
You know what I, I mean? <laughs> well, like, man, I was, there's some dude in Wisconsin that he had assigned me a couple things over the years, and it's always like the lowest context stuff in terms of, you know, he'll be like, hey, this doctor who does nootropics, that's cute. <laughs> and like, this doctor who does nootropics, he wants like a PR article, and I'll be like, okay, about what? And he'll be like, oh, I don't know. Right? It's always like that type of assignment where you're like, oh, this is worthless. And then he's like, oh, yeah, he can pay you 25 bucks, and you're like, pass. Okay, so this kid. <laughs> I don't get out of bed for like 250, so try again. <laughs> right. So we became uh, friends on Facebook. Um, so I saw him about three weeks ago, two, three weeks ago. He um, was just like, he posted about depression and he was like, man, people that are depressed need to like pull themselves up and cut their bullshit out. And I was like, oh God, like I'm going in, <laughs> I'm, I'm jumping in, right? So I wrote him this thing and I was like, man, this is the fucking biggest bullshit like virtue signaling that I've ever seen where it's like first of all if you haven't experienced depression you can't talk about it in reality second of all you can't come out and say that it's just like a pull up or like a push up and you just like come off the floor come out of it it doesn't work that way right oh. and I got a bunch of people liking my comments obviously as modern society goes, I felt real good about that, right? But it's just like fucking, like, I don't know if people put takes like that out because they just like want to piss people off and get a bunch of comments or if they honestly believe shit like that, right? You know, he reminds me of is, you know, those guys, is the, the Twitter trolls, you know, that have like five followers, but they respond to somebody with yeah. 350,000 followers yeah. with some stupid shit like, like, I know better how a vagina works than you and I don't have one. Those right. kind of guys. <laughs> it's like, <gasps> because they just, they literally are just looking for validation that they exist, I think. Right? right. Like this fucking guy that's got five fucking friends on Twitter. Right. right. Like, what does he matter? What we're all in like at some level we're all in like a quest for purpose or relevance and like ideally you would get it in like more wholesome ways like okay not to rabbit hole this but I, I mean I kind of think in general like our success markers for society are kind of bullshit like a lot of people are like marriage kids big house yeah. fucking cool salary cool job like those things matter but predominantly they're superficial like family maybe is less superficial although family can be totally fucked up too um wait have you met us what are you talking right. about right. so i just feel like our success markers are busted as is but you know we're all like we're basically like a bunch of apes that evolved into like more than apes and we're like walking around trying to figure out like what our purpose and relevance is so if you get that from attacking people online, I guess more power to you. Like it's not probably the most productive or helpful way to get it, but if that's your pathway to it, like I can't, I'm not going to begrudge you that because everybody deserves like some. Right, but I think there's a breakdown in society with that too. Like, like you've watched me go through this where I have to be like, and I text you pretty frequently. We're still, right. we're still pretty close as friends go. So I still am yeah. texting you like all the time with, I'm having a meltdown. Right. Yeah, sure. And I'm like but, the same fucking way. I mean, right. But I don't think we let people think that that's okay enough. Right. Right. I agree with that. You know what I mean? I will say though, like I was going to try to weave this in to this anyway but i will say though like okay sometimes it can be boring but i will say like i'm on like day probably 15 of not drinking i'm so proud of you by the way <laughs> cool man so i'm on like 15 of not drinking for lent and i'm i'm gonna try to do like well i'm gonna try to continue past lent but i feel like uh, event like certain events and shit i might but i gotta figure out my whole relationship to it but i will say in the 15 my coach I'm, face went on did you see my coach face go on yeah yeah 
<laughs> I will say in the 15, probably the best thing about it is that, like, it is much easier, and this should, this is not breaking news by any means, but it is much easier to manage, like, meltdowns or rabbit holes or wormholes or whatever without, like, some form of attached substance use type deal, right? Because yep. you, if you're trying to fe- deal with, like, feelings of inadequacy or whatever or um you know like uh, my shit keeps hitting the fan and you're adding like a depressant on top of it or even a fucking stimulant really you're not dealing with it like with a clear head or as yourself and that like i would say that's probably the best part of it is like some days or whatever are more boring and I feel like more adult boring which is good and bad but I will say it makes it much easier to deal with like bullshit and like down periods you still have them they don't go away um and you still text people like you I probably have like six people on my phone that I can text about that type of shit Mm -hmm. you know one of them um but I would say um it does make it easier to not be like abusing shit at the same time that you're going through that you know that adds an extra level because because when you're doing that i mean look i have i have chronic medical stuff so i just kind of before the cancer just kind of didn't feel good just kind of as a baseline wasn't a good feeling it was occasional that that I would feel good. And a lot of people are like that. And I'm not even ranking on, you know, drinking or whatever, or self-medicating or anything, but you're right. It absolutely, like when I stopped smoking, I noticed that I have anxiety. (laughs) And the spirals for for a while there got so much worse. And then I was able to figure out how to actually handle them in a way that wasn't sit down and have a cigarette. Right, right. I will say this. I think before we started recording, we were talking a little bit about I went to this wedding in Pittsburgh like two, three weekends ago. So that was right when I started this Lent deal, right? Right. So um, uh, I knew that was going to be like one of the hardest fucking things because it's a family wedding and I didn't really even want to go. I kind of got like guilt tripped into going by my mom. And I knew it was going to be like, oh, I got to get through this without drinking, right? So one of my cousins, uh, fiancés, baby daddies, whatever you want to call it, he smokes, uh, and he smokes like Marlboro Reds. And I hadn't fucking smoked a Marlboro Red in like 15 years, right? So just because my like mom was annoying me and I was trying to get to this wedding without drinking, I was like, yeah, I'll come outside with you. I'll bum one, right? So first of all, I almost died trying to smoke this cigarette because I hadn't smoked a red in like forever and they're pretty tough to smoke, especially if you're not consistent with it. What was funny though is like, I was only doing it to take the edge off or get out of this like hotel ballroom or whatever because I couldn't drink to do that. But well, what's funny is, and like, I do find this cool about humanity in general, is like, we were out there ripping this cig, and I think we had like two ultimately. And again, I like died trying to smoke these two cigarettes. But he was like telling, I don't know him that well, even though he like has a kid with my cousin. Right. And we were like talking about like his mom died at eight when he was eight, and just like shit about his life. So like, I appreciate that part about humanity where you can like bond quickly with people, whether it's over like a drink or a cigarette or whatever. And it doesn't even have to be over those things. I do think that's cool. And we probably don't give enough credit to those moments in modernity. We talk more about uh, like, you know, fucking Instagram stories or whatever. So I think that's cool. Um, and I'm proud of myself also just to blow smoke on my own ass because I didn't drink at that wedding and I easily could have, you know. So 
Um, so there's there's kind of like a snapshot of like humanity plus not drinking simultaneously. <laughs> Well, first of all, I'm super proud of you for not drinking. Yeah, that's good, man. I'm good wondering night. if, and I know that I know that it's it's maybe not just because it's a thing that you like to do, right? It's maybe not a thing that is gonna stop happening altogether. Like now, right. now that I haven't drank in so long because of the cancer thing, like I've yeah. tried to drink, I have permission to drink, and I can't. Right. Like my body is just straight rejecting it. Like it right. just is absolutely not having any any of it. <laughs> right. Not does right. not like it. Um, and that's fine. That's a whole, that's a whole thing. Like I'd have to force myself to get back into drinking now. Um, but I've had the last like two years to, to kind of not to, to find something to fill that. But so this really doesn't apply to you because I don't, I, you, you didn't stop drinking because I don't know how to put that. <laughs> You didn't, st I don't think you stopped drinking because it was something that was it, the cause of no, yeah, that was happening in your life. I think it was like, um, I think it's a couple of things. Like, obviously, there's like a health factor in there that I wanted to be better about. Right. I would say also, like, just in general, like, when you really think about it, and like, there's a dude. I think he's dead now, but there's a dude, Alan Carr, who wrote these books about, like, quitting smoking, quitting drinking, quitting, like, hard drugs, whatever. And on the drinking one, he kind of, like, shits on AA. So, like, I've been to AA stuff. I think it's okay. Uh, obviously, it's worked for millions of people, so I would never, like, crap on it. I think that... I'm like religious and I go to church and I'm like mostly spiritual. I feel like you have to be like almost like very spiritual, like give deeply into like, oh, God fixes everything or like God is above everything to like for AA to totally work for you because it's very like religious, spiritual in execution, right? I yep. think. If you have a more rational, logical mind, and I'm not saying that people that are religious are like not rational, but if you have a more rational mind where you try to like parse shit out, I think AA is like a little bit harder. And yeah. this Alan Carr stuff and some other people are like a little bit easier because it's kind of like, what are you even doing at some level? Like I, man, I had a couple... I had a couple of days in like late, I want to say like fall 2019, where like if I finished a bunch of work by like noon, 1 p.m., or even not a bunch of work, like if I didn't have a high volume of shit and I finished stuff, I just like fucking go meet people and like drink or whatever. And like then it evolved to like sometimes I'd be bored and I just fucking do it by myself. And it's like there's no. You're not like gaining anything by doing that, right? So that's kind of like the mindset shift that I'm in right now where it's like I'm trying to uh, just like repeatedly convince myself like, man, even if I go back and I do drink periodically in the future, like I got to just realize like there's certain situations like sitting by yourself and having like three to four drinks accomplishes like fucking virtually nothing for you like nothing right? right and i've done that like more times than i would care to openly admit <laughs> right so um that's just kind of like i'm trying to fucking balance that side of it out but through 15 days it's been pretty good and it i, I didn't really have any um I didn't really have any like withdrawals or anything, which was a good, was a semi positive sign to me that maybe I'm not like, it's not some super dire type situation. Cause I was kind of able to physically do it without a lot of uh, issue within the transition. So I guess right. that's positive, but you know, I'm just out here trying to be the best version of self that I can try and be, you know? Right. And typically, and you're, you, you know this, typically with, with someone like that trying to break an addiction, we would say, 
cool, replace it with something else. All right. But you are already like, you're exercising more, right. you're doing other things, you're actually actively making a choice to like, what am I going to fill that time with? Because I don't want to go back and like be bored and drink all the time. Like I need to find something else. Right. For yeah. sure. And but that's you think why. ultimately for the both of us, those kinds of things come as we become, as we become more relevant to ourselves and are able to grow our businesses as they were. So I think yeah. that that. I think yeah. that's a big part of it too, is like, I, okay. Think about even like some of the shit I was just talking about is like, I would have days where, like, let's say I even worked out in the morning. It's like, if I get back from that at, like, 6.37, I do stuff with Samson, like, I eat something or whatever. Let's say I had, like, an 8 to noon window, and I, like, accomplished some shit in there. And, like, again, there are a lot of people, and, like, when I'm on, myself included, can probably accomplish a bunch of shit in four hours. But then it's, like, I would basically accomplish nothing between like 12 p.m. and 6 p.m., right? And it's like, so think about like kind of the broader universe that one could expose themselves to if they have like 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. with like a couple breaks instead of 8 a.m. to noon and then like basically the back end of the day is shot, right? So I think that's kind of like the lesson that I try to keep returning myself to. And hopefully um, I'll be like pretty consistent on that going forward. That's at least the dream, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Yep. But I think it's doable. So um, let's go, let's go ahead and fucking say that it is. (laughs) 